Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Somaji Bhattacharya this side and in today's video, I have discussed the entire code for the low level design of a hotel management system. So without further ado, let's get started. In today's video, we will be discussing about the coding of the low level design of a hotel management system. In the previous video, we have already drawn the use case diagram. So we will be taking that use case diagram as our base to build our code on. If you are new to the channel or you are viewing this video for the first time and have not viewed the part one, I would suggest that you go and view that part one video. I will keep the link of my part one video in the description below as well as attach it in the card here so that you can go there and quickly see that video. That video is required to understand how we came up with this particular use case diagram for our system. For your reference, I have given the link to this particular use case diagram in the description below so that you have a point of reference while I keep referring to this particular use case diagram. Whenever someone asks you to write the code for a low level design, we should first identify the base classes that needs to be there to in order to achieve this particular low level design. In this case, we are designing a hotel management system. So the first class that needs to be there needs to point to a particular entity which is known as a hotel in our case. So we will start from there. So let's start by creating a class named hotel. As we know, every class has certain attributes that actually define what that class is all about. For hotel, the attributes will be name, obviously, because every hotel will have a name. An ID, since we are developing a complete hotel management solution, that's why every hotel should be identified by a unique identifier. Here, for simplicity, we are using an integer, but we can also use Java's unique user identification number, also known as UUID. And obviously, every hotel will have a location. Here, we are choosing to represent the location with the help of another class known as a location class that will contain the hotel location. Whenever we are trying to come up with classes as well as its corresponding data members, we should always aim to dissociate different classes with each other. What it will do is it will essentially decouple these two classes so that we can modify the location class without having to change the hotel class. That will be it for our hotel class. Here we can see we have used several complex objects inside the hotel class. So let us go ahead and define these complex objects. So the idea behind any low level interview is that how well we can write complex classes, how well we can write the interactions between complex classes and how we use different design principles. So here, as we have introduced two complex classes, location and room, we will go ahead and identify these complex classes. And we will go on doing that till that time we do not have any complex class left. Once we reach that stage, then we can think about writing all the interactions between them if required. So let us go ahead and write our first complex class, which is location. The location class will have an integer pin. Here for simplicity, we are using an integer pin, assuming it's a six digit number, a string street, a string area, a string city, and a string country. Now we go ahead and start defining our room class that we have used inside hotel. So the room class will again have a room number. After that, we have our enum defined as room style. As for our requirement, rooms can be categorized into different types. And these types are actually determined by the room style object. Then we have another enum, which is the room status. Because since we are building a hotel management slash booking system, every room will have an associated status with it. This status will actually tell us whether or not the room is booked, whether or not the room is empty, or whether or not the room is being serviced, and so on and so forth. Then the room object will also have a booking price and a list of room keys. Then as per our requirement, we will also be having a list of housekeeping logs because our requirement suggested that every housekeeper who is servicing a room will need to mandatorily update the housekeeping logs. Here, we choose to keep housekeeping logs inside the room object. Why we are choosing to keep these housekeeping logs inside the room object is because a room should be having housekeeping logs because a housekeeping log will be specific to one particular room. Because of this has a relationship that a room has with the housekeeping logs, we are choosing to keep this particular housekeeping logs inside a room. Now we can see there are several complex objects that we have defined by defining the class room. So we'll quickly go ahead and define those objects. 
the first object that we can see here is obviously the room style. So let us quickly define all the complex objects that we have used for defining our room object. Here, the first object that we can see is the room style. As discussed, room style will be an enum in nature. This room style will help us determine what kind of a room a particular room object is. In our use case, let us just say that a room style will contain a standard deluxe and family suite, which basically tells us that a room can either be a standard room, a deluxe room or a family suite room. The next complex object that I can see here is the room status object. Room status will also be an enum type of an object. This room status will contain the present status of a particular room, which can be available, reserved, not available, occupied and service in progress. The next complex object that we can see here is the room key. So let us start by defining the room key. The room key will, uh, will obviously be a class because it has corresponding data members that are associated with it. The data members that are technically associated with the room key is obviously a room key ID because a room can have a list of room keys. So it should be identifiable by a unique key. Then obviously for all the hotels that actually use an electronic key card, it will also contain a unique barcode that will be uh, present inside the room key. Apart from that, it will also house a date which is issued at date, which essentially tells us when the room key was issued. It will contain a boolean which is an is active, which actually tells us whether or not this particular room key uh, physical card is active in nature or not. Then it will contain another boolean which is is master, which actually tells us whether this particular key is a master key or it's a particular room key only. Then it will also contain a method which is an assign room method which will take in as input a room object. The whole idea of an assigned room API here is that whenever we initialize a room key object, we also assign this particular room key to a particular room, which is what this essentially does is this will essentially uh, use this particular room key object and add it to the list of room keys present inside the rooms object that we are giving it as input. Now next that we can see is housekeeping log. So housekeeping log will also be a complex class. So let us start by defining that class. Housekeeping log will obviously contain the description of what activity was performed, uh, when was it performed, for how much duration that particular housekeeping activity was performed, and then who was the housekeeper who was performing these activities. Apart from this, there will be another API which is very similar to the room key API that we will use to add this particular housekeeping log inside the list which is present inside a room. So similar to the room key, this API will also accept a room object and it will essentially add the housekeeping log object to the list of housekeeping logs present inside the room that we are giving it. Here inside the housekeeping logs, as we can see, we have used another complex object, which is the housekeeper. Uh, so let's get started by defining that. But before defining that, let us quickly go through all the actors that we had identified in the previous video. If I quickly go through this particular diagram, we can see that there are five actors that we have identified. And out of that five actors, four of them are actually of type person, which means a guest is a person, a receptionist is also a person, an admin is also a person, and housekeeping is also a person, which specifically tells us that we will be able to use inheritance here so that we push some of the responsibilities to the base class and use different subclasses in order to achieve specific functionalities of each of them. So let us first go ahead and define the base class. So here, as we can see, we are using an abstract class here uh, and that class is of class type person and that will contain obviously the name of the person, the account details as well as the phone. These three details are particularly common across all the actors and hence we have relegated the three details into the parent class which is person. So let us go ahead and define the account class. The account class here for simplicity we are assuming that will contain a username and a password as well as another enum that will define the status of the account. Generally we use enums to define statuses of a particular object or type of a particular object. Enum serves a very good use case for defining these kind of scenarios. Here, let's go ahead and define the enum account status. The enum account status will contain three values, which is active, closed or blocked. Let us quickly start by defining the actors which are related to this particular base class here. 
let us go ahead and start by defining all the base classes that extend this particular parent class that is the class of persons we have namely four actors that will be extending this person class since we have defined housekeeper already let us start by creating that class the housekeeper class will be extending person for simplicity we do not expect housekeeper class to contain any kind of specific data members associated with the housekeeper housekeeper class although will have access to one particular api that api will be the get room serviced which will essentially list down all the rooms that are serviced by this particular housekeeper in a given date the next class is the guest class the guest class will contain two different objects one the search object and the other the booking object if we look closely to our use case diagram we know that the search room as well as the book room and cancel room are completely shared between the guest and the receptionist so we cannot have explicit search book and cancel apis inside the guest object because if we do have these apis inside the guest object then we would have to replicate that piece of code inside the receptionist as well which will increase code redundancy which we do not want while we are developing this particular low level design with solid principles so here we are defining two separate classes one the search class and the two the booking class that will contain the search uh, apis as well as the booking and cancelling apis that both the guest and receptionist has an access to so here we are using composition wherein guest class will be having two other objects one the search and the other booking object as well as the receptionist class that we will be defining in a bit will also have the same objects so here the admin class will as usual will be extending the person class and will be containing the three apis as discussed below the add room delete room and the edit room the add room and the edit room will take in as input the room object that it will be adding or editing to and the delete room will be taking the room id which is the unique identifier that we had defined inside the room object to actually delete that room from our database apart from that let us quickly also define the two classes that we have used inside the receptionist and the guest that will be used for searching a room booking a room and cancelling a room the search class here will actually contain just the one api for simplicity that will enable both guest as well as the receptionist to search for rooms it will take in as input the room style the start date as well as the duration and it will return me the list of rooms available similarly the booking class will also contain two apis as discussed one will be used to create a booking and second will be used to cancel a booking similarly both the methods will be returning me an object of room booking which is basically an object that identifies one particular booking now we can see that we have defined another complex object which is the room booking object so we will be quickly defining that class here as well the class room booking will contain the following attributes these are very basic attributes that we will be using to actually identify the room booking class only the notable ones here is the booking status which will be an enum in this case a uh, list of guests and list of rooms are obviously essential for a room booking as well as the total room charge that will be the total amount of charge per booking that we will be storing in this particular object now let us explore how we will be storing to, uh, the room charges here one thing to note here is uh, for any kind of a hotel room that we book there are multiple charges associated with it one is obviously the basic cost of the room that you need to pay per night second is the cost of any additional room service that you order if you order any kind of room service then that cost gets added up onto the basic cost of the room then the third amount of charging that uh, basically uh, the hotel people charge is any kind of in room purchases which can include any purchase from your mini bar for example anything that you purchase from the room itself is also added to your basic room charge and then charged to you this can be very well represented with the help of decorator pattern here we will be creating a base room charge we will be populating that object with the basic room charge applicable for this particular room booking and then after that for every additional room service or every additional in room purchase that the guests make we will keep on adding the cost of every particular in room purchase and every room service to this particular base object if i quickly code it down then it will be extremely easy for you to understand for example i have created here an interface that contains one method which is the get get cost method we will then have another class that is the room charge that will be implementing this base room charge it will contain a cost method as well as its setters and getters what this room charge actually signify is the total room charge for this particular room booking that we have done 
then there will be another class that will contain the room service charge this room service charge class will be implementing the same interface this room service charge class will contain the cost of the room service apart from that it will also contain a base room charge object what this base room charge object will do is essentially whenever a room service is called whatever the cost this room service has it will add it to the cost of the room and will return it so essentially we are enhancing or we are decorating the cost of the room by adding the cost of the room service charge every time someone orders a room service apart from that similarly there will also be another class which will be an in room purchase charge it will contain the cost of the in room purchase as well as the base room charge so whenever someone purchases something inside the room then whatever the cost is we will add that cost to the room cost and will return the room cost so essentially we are using the decorator pattern here to actually solve the room charge problem in a hotel management system by this we come to an end of the entire ld of the hotel management system i hope you like the video by this we come to the end of the entire low level design of a hotel management system if i quickly recap we created the base hotel object added the location object to the base hotel object created the base room object added the room style and the room status for every room then we created a room key object which is associated with a room object as a list of room keys and created a housekeeping log object apart from that to model all our actors we created a base class as person associated account level details with the base class person then we created the all the actors here one by one the housekeeper the guest the reception nest as well as the admin all the actors will contain one or the other apis that we discussed as the use case for our system apart from that we also created the search as well as booking classes so why we created these two classes separately is because these two classes are uh, or these two classes can be accessed directly by both guests and receptionists if we had not created these as separate classes then we would have to write redundant code in both guests and receptionist and apart from that because of the booking class we created a room booking object as well Apart from that we also use decorator pattern to solve the room charge problem in a hotel management system wherein we use a base room charge and every time someone orders a room service or an in room purchase we take that base room charge and add the cost of that particular room service and return it that will be it for today i hope you like my content i have shared the entire code in the description below hope you like my content i will be publishing more such low level design problems and solutions in the near future um please comment down below what you would like me to improve and comment down below what more different kind of videos you would like me to make uh subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that whenever i upload more such amazing content it gets notified to you thank you that will be it for today this is somajit bidding goodbye dasdanya